Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the business meeting for the city of Prattville. We have no public hearings this evening, but we'll conduct a work session, a regular council agenda, and executive session tonight. Let's move into the work session. Last council meeting, our finance director, Daniel Oakley, discussed that the one cent sales tax, by his estimation, will sunset on July 31st. We can either let this one cent sales tax retire or continue it and designate it to various projects or needs for the city. We'll discuss infrastructure, education, parks and rec, and public facilities in the coming weeks. If the council wants to discuss any additional needs, please let me know. The one cent sales tax brings in approximately 6.8 million a year. We can designate this into one, two, three, or four departments. If we decide two buckets, it could either be 3.4 million each, or three buckets, 2.3 million each, or four buckets, 1.7 million each, or bring the reserve account to 10 million prior to any other projects. Tonight, Robbie Anderson, our city engineer, will discuss the different infrastructure projects. Robbie, you have the floor. Thank you all. Good evening. I appreciate this opportunity to, to be first because the first guy gets filled up, right? Might get my bucket first. But, uh, thank you. That, Lisa, can you um, start to have a little some slides for you guys to look at behind me? The first one is just our title page. Thank you. And um, obviously, this is just the map of the city that you all are very familiar with, but it just sort of gives an overview of how we've spread over the years. We uh, have been spreading more to the west, obviously, and then still to the north, more north for growth. Um, we have about 275 miles of streets within, within our city limits. Uh, and in the recent years, we've taken over about 40 miles of streets that when we had a, a partnership previously with the county, they were maintaining for us, but now that, that's fallen to us. So we've got our total up to about 275 miles. So in, inside, that, uh, inside that yellow area. Um, got several different things that we that we do with with our money, the funds that are, that y'all y'all grant to us. We do, of course, ongoing maintenance, potholes, cleaning out ditches, things like that. And then we obviously resurface roads and then build new roads. So we've got a, um, up there for you to see our roadway facts. Um, we've not too long ago completed a pavement uh, condition index, talking about our resurfacing. And uh, we've been working at that for, I think, three cycles now that we've been working to work on the worst first. And we currently still have about 25 miles that would be rated below a 70. And we sort of kind of relate that back to in school, you want to be 70 or, or above to be to be in passing condition. So still have about 70 miles or 25 miles of that that are 70 or below. Um, our average or our last paving, last couple of paving projects, been able to do about seven and a half miles each time. Um, prices for the last couple of projects have been about a hundred thousand a mile for resurfacing. So you can see, for twenty-five miles, it, it adds up pretty quickly. How just to get us up to seventy, and that's an, an ongoing process that continues. Um, as you see down, kind of on the bottom bottom bullet there, with our recent growth, we're adding two to three miles of new roads every year, which, which is a great thing, but 15 to 20 years down the road, they're on the resurfacing list. Their pavement index has dropped below. And you see two to three years of that, we've eaten up a whole nother, another paving project. So we'll, we'll have another million dollars added in there. Uh, we have city seven city-maintained bridges, owned and maintained bridges. Right now, they're all in really good shape. Our, our oldest one being the Bridge Street Bridge down here, and of course, the newest one being on the new industrial park road. So, um, you know, those lifespans, 50 years or so. So some are, you know, some are brand new, some are, you know, needing, needing attention. We, uh, there are very highly rated now. We're inspected uh, every, every other year for that. So we're doing well with no bridge replacements needed at the moment. Um, other thing we would, we would consider is um, major projects, things that, that come along. And I've got a list here of uh, Kind of our current project tracker list. Some are underway, some are in design phase, and some are getting ready to get started. Just kind of read quickly down through those. Uh, Fairview Avenue expansion. That's uh, adding turn lanes from US 31 out to uh, 
Diane Drive and then resurfacing on to uh, Jasmine Trail. Uh, East Main Street Drainage Project is a, is a project that's kind of been in the works for a while. There's a, a culvert that's in question that probably needs replacing and it needs a, needs a partnership because it, of where it, where it uh, lies. The Mill Road and Sewer, y'all, I think it's your last meeting or meeting before last, have just approved the construction of the Mill Road. And so that one's going to be beginning any, any time now for another million and a half dollars. Uh, Cooters Pond Walkway is a sidewalk project, ADA project down in, in Cooters Pond Park. Uh, Y'all have been there, you realize that it, the boat ramps are not really readily accessible and the, and the fishing dock, things like that. So project's been on the books for a while, trying to get that done. Obviously some challenges with the amount of grade, so uh, it ends up being, being a fairly complex project that's still on the books. Washington Street, Drainage, uh, Easy Street, Bunch Avenue, I think. Um, that's a project that's ongoing. As you probably were aware when you tried to get to City Hall tonight, you probably came uh, around that area. You didn't. Hopefully you didn't go pass through it. But that, that's ongoing and uh, hopefully be completed this summer. Um, Shady Oak, Silver Hills Sidewalk. We have continued to do sidewalk projects. We've done in some in the Silver Hills area in the past, and that's sort of what we've been using our tap money. We did the Maple Street Sidewalk. Those are pretty big sidewalk projects we do every year. This is just a, a, the next phase. We, we attempt to uh, connect Shady Oak neighborhood with Silver Hills neighborhood via, via sidewalk, um, which is going to require some modifications down at the culvert for, for a good crossing there and stay out of the stream. Once again, that's just another, another project we have, we have on here. Uh, Bridge Street Pedestrian Bridge, another, another project we're actively pursuing, getting really close to, uh, to letting that. We're working with a DOT on that one which will be a pedestrian bridge right down here on Bray Street for, obviously, uh, as it says, pedestrians to cross and, and, and complete our interior loop around downtown walking around the creek. Um, ATRIP 2 is what we call this. This is really an intersection improvement project, which is about seven intersections on US 31, all the way from down at County 4, all the way up to Main and Memorial with some turn lane improvements and radius improvements, uh, things like that. I don't know if you've, you've taken up to notice. Some of those are more heavily traveled by trucks now that don't always stay on the paved surface. So need to make some improvements there. Uh, obviously, if you've been through uh, US 31, US 82 at rush hour, an additional turn lane is needed there to, to help clear the traffic going northbound to westbound. That's a, another about $900,000 worth, worth of work that we need to pursue. Uh, we've applied to, to the DOT twice with some of the uh, rebuild Alabama money have not been successful in getting that. So we, we've kept it on our list and it's something we still want to pursue. Uh, Maple Street is a drainage and resurfacing project that uh, we're working with ADM on. Hopefully uh, we're going to bid that here in another couple of weeks, which is uh, kind of a twofold. Like I said getting a little bit better riding surface as well as take care of some localized drainage and kind of protect our, our, our waterway uh, has some roadway filtering, uh, roadway water filtering capa capacity there. Uh, next project on the list, the big one, McQueen Smith Road widening from Main Street, Cobbs Ford Road down to US 31. That's, uh, if, you, if you scan over a couple lines, there's $18 million to, to get that accomplished. And uh, we're right now in the right-of-way acquisition phase. We've been fortunate to have funding approved for the right-of-way acquisition, working, working through that at the moment. But as soon as that's complete, we'll be ready to, to hopefully move to construction. Uh, Thomas Avenue drainage project is, a, is another kind of combined sewer and drainage project, much in the same vein that the Washington Street improvements are. There's some sewer needs in the area and some stormwater drainage. This is the stormwater that, that originates up at US 31 by McDonald's, the old Dairy Queen, where the water starts to collect there. No clear path to get all the way to the drainage canal that's on Cardinal, which is kind of behind the YMCA. That's where all that water eventually gets. This project we designed to more efficiently take that water straight straight down to the uh, to the receiving stream. Uh, I've added a, a 2022 resurfacing project. That'll be our next year. We didn't budget for one this year, but that's just another ongoing. Like I said, we'll be. Uh, looking at those that are below 70 pavement condition index and trying to get those onto a list and getting getting those paved. We uh, have recently in the last few years been budgeting an annual sidewalk repair budget of about 75000 And uh, this year we added an additional line item for new sidewalks. So uh, before we've just been repairing where we had sidewalk, now we're looking at areas that didn't have sidewalk to, to add them. 
And then we have a, an actual stormwater budget of 100,000. That's sort of the, the, the big project list of kind of where we are, where we're on going. And as you all are aware, you all are ju just finishing up our 2040 Prattville plan. And there, were some, there was a transportation um, component to that as well that identified some projects. Uh, the map I've shown is, is actually, actually just from, pulled it just out of the comprehensive plan. Some of the projects that are on here are the ones I've already mentioned that are, <coughs> excuse me, a little further along in development, but some aren't. Um, the top one on the list there, the east-west corridor, corridor connector from Fairview to US 31, that's sort of a northern corridor. It's been discussed several times in the past. Has made it back into the 2040 plan is something to look at. These I don't have any cost estimates on yet. These these are really just I guess we haven't even formally adopted the plan yet. But if they do, here's where we'll here's where we'll head in the next 20 years. Um, the turn lanes at 31A2 I mentioned, US A2 widening. Although that's that's a US uh, ALDOT project on US route, it's on here because the community says it needs to be on there, and they're actually pursuing that. They've let the first phase of of that link, and they're going to begin soon on that. Some other are some intersection type improvements uh, around the schools, uh, some maybe changing the intersections, going to roundabouts at the high school and or near the high school on, on Upper Kingston and near the junior high school on Martin Luther King. Um, once again, widen McQueen Smith, that seems to be on everybody's list and it's on here again. And then improve the intersection of McQueen Smith and 31. That will happen Hopefully we'll get the whole entire project. If not, we'll probably have to advance that into a separate project ahead of the entire widening. Um, some new type roads is an east-west connector on Ridgewood Road, which would connect the Mac Gray area over to US 31 with a more direct route. And uh, the last one on this list is a J Street extension. Once again, would go over from the Daniel Pratt School directly over to McQueen Smith and hopefully to a widen McQueen Smith for, for capacity reasons. But those are just a quick kind of overview of kind of where we are on some projects and where some future projects might be. I have just another minute. I'll talk about how we how we fund. Um, currently, we receive from a variety of state fuel taxes about $450,000 a year. And from our local four cent tax, about a million dollars a year, which, which goes to pay for these projects, Pay to run the street department. Pay for pay for several different things, and uh, Daniel could probably get into more detail about exactly how that's divided. But those are the kind of the numbers. Uh, one one interesting thing about our fuel tax, it is not a percentage like our sales tax is. So last year, when fuel was a dollar fifty a gallon, we raised a million dollars. This year, when fuel is two fifty a gallon, we raised a million dollars. It's a tax on per gallon. That's you know good that the tax doesn't go up. However. Our costs went up. When that fuel price went up 60%, the cost of asphalt went up 60%. So our buying power is reduced. So that same sales tax, uh, same uh, per gallon tax doesn't go quite as far this year as it did last year. And then um, I guess the last little, little thing I put on there is um, what one quarter of this one penny sales tax would, would basically yield about a million and a half dollars a year, which would go towards... And you can see that would really double what's dedicated to infrastructure spending spending right now. One other, I guess, trivia fact, I guess, about the uh, fuel tax is electric vehicles. They don't use gasoline. So as people get more and more electrical vehicles, our ability to collect road user tax goes down. So that, that's just something on the horizon. Like I said, I'm trying to throw this out there for a 20-year time frame. We may need a different funding source. Uh, we're, we're obviously going to do these projects. We're going to continue to have people travel the roadways and, and need to do drainage improvements. But if our funding source starts to go down and our needs go up, uh, at some point we're going to be coming to you to ask for, for some sort of funding. And so uh, I guess one reason why I'm standing here tonight is here's an opportunity to secure some dedicated funding for infrastructure projects. Like I said, just a, just a quick overview of where we are with basically road road and drainage type projects. Uh, infrastructure covers a lot of different things, but that's uh, kind of in a nutshell where we are. And I'd be happy to talk about this or answer any questions. Counselors, do you have any questions? I got one. Um, on the 
the list that you provided us, we are these are all active to some extent. Is that the yes, way I understood yeah, that? Yes, so the first list was a uh, active in some point, whether it's in design or maybe moving towards construction. Like I said, a couple of them have already been let to construction. And so that's kind of in all phases of where we are with really, like you said, active active projects. Is there a, a um, sort of a modification to that list that even though they're all active, the realistic opportunity of, of by can we accomplish this in, in five years or is it going to take longer than than that or do you have is that a, a fair question to that, ask? That, that, that's a fair question. I could I could reshuffle this. I probably couldn't do it right here standing in front of you, but some of them and I if you if you have the list in front of you, you can look at it. Um, some of them we have identified funding sources. Some of them our partners are ALDOT, some of them are ADAM. Um, so we have some of them maybe even public private type partnerships that we're able to get uh, get different type funding for which which you guys see when I come in here asking you to enter an agreement with a state agency. That's really what we're doing. We're leveraging these dollars. And then you'll get to uh, kind of the bottom half there, which I don't really have uh, identified where we're gonna, where we're gonna get those, those funds for. Um, you know, the biggest one, obviously the $18 million McQueen-Smith, we have applied two years in a row now to the Federal Highway Administration for a build grant and been denied both times. We can continue to ask for that and we don't think it's an unrealistic ask but as with anything, there are a lot more asks than there are, there are funds available. And, and so far, we, you know, had a good application, been well received, but just not funded. Um, the others, you know, kind of at the bottom, the annual stuff, it kind of comes out of the existing fuel tax now or, or out of the general fund if, if, if those dollars are available. But, um, you know, I could go back and work this up. I, I think uh, really all of them, I think, are realistic. Um, I think they they need they do need to happen. That's why I've got them on my active list, and we're you know we're spending engineering dollars now. We're spending time on them, so I consider them all real realistic. And um, some of the little little further out time frame than others, but this is a, a short term a short term list. I, I appreciate the information. Um, I think if you could incorporate also the the local paving as um, unless that I've missed that somewhere here. Yeah, I have it down here on the 2022 resurfacing project. Uh, it's uh, about fourth up from the bottom of the list. If we, if you've got the same list I'm looking at. It says but that's one year. That's one year. You're right. It's, that didn't, I didn't project this out over any more than that's what we're working up now. That's our next paving project will be next year. But that, so I would I'm, think that would become, it needs to be an annual, an annual figure, really and truly. And it's been a, every other year, once again, going back to our collection, what, what we're, what we're budgeted. So. Well, I was just looking at the last three, it talks about annual expenditure, and then we had roads for one year. Correct. I was thinking. That well, I would absolutely love to put annual beside that. <laughs> Nothing will make me happier, or either to double it up and still do it every other year, but 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 have a hundred a million five project instead of a seven fifty project. Just trying to get a little more realistic. Well, then that's really yeah. honestly that's where we need to be. Uh, that's why I was, you know was kind of trying to display with our number of road miles and our and our pavement condition index. Thank you. We need to be doing it that much every year to to stay current, or we're going to end up with a glut at the end. We're going to end up with more than we can do. Yes, sir. If I might, Mr. Anderson, will you uh, explain for the audience how over the last several years uh, the council has found additional funding outside of that for us to help uh, uh, increase the, the amount of miles we've been able to repave? And then also, I know we have a few problem areas. Um, Sixth Street might be one that's sort of settling some, and then uh, one over in a Hearthstone subdivision, and just how those sort of are reoccurring because of natural. Yeah, those are those situation. those two you mentioned. Uh, the Hearthstone's recurring because of a natural spring, natural well underneath underneath the roadway. Sixth Street is reoccurring, I guess, due to the natural soil foundation underneath. There was a storm, a sewer sanitary sewer project that went down through Sixth Street some years ago, and it's been subsiding almost ever since. So we've had to 
uh, scheduled to resurface that as well. <coughs> as, as far as the uh, annual funding, um, been working closely with, with Daniel Oakley and, uh, and lobbying for additional funds each year. And so the last two programs he's been able to add, I think 250,000 this year, we added to our total. <coughs> Once again, we just increased the scope of the project by that much dollars. And I think the last one it was almost 250 as well, I believe. Uh, maybe five, six years ago, we were on a half million dollar projects. So now we're up at 750. But I'm saying we need to do that every year. So that's still asking for increase again. <coughs> I apologize. I'm choking just a little bit. I'm sorry, Chair. Is there any other questions from the counselors? Daniel? No, go ahead. Please. I need some relief. Well, this, is, well, this is a question for you. Um, so, and can you talk a little bit about, I know you mentioned, I don't remember the name of the survey, but we have, several years ago, maybe five or six years ago, we had a, a rating on all the streets in the city, and you're using that number of the 70 PCI, I think it was, but that, that was a number then, right? Or Correct. is that number annually, and theoretically all the streets deteriorate at the same rate. I know that's not reality, but theoretically, but that 70 number was 76 years ago, and that number would be lower now? Is that Correct. Uh, we, we, we did have a overall, every street in the city we analyzed for a pavement condition, which was six or seven years ago. And Daniel's right, those numbers change. We basically start with our grade sheet of every list. But when we're developing a project, we also analyze current conditions, uh, traffic pattern changes, things like that. We kind of look at all the attributes to put that to put that plan together but the first yardstick i have is i pull out my list and say okay which are our worst first streets certainly things could have happened just like the mayor mentioned if we have some you know naturally occurring a spring or something like that, that's going to obviously hearthstone drive is going to come up on the list because it's failing things like that will impact that rating <clears throat> it's not just a blind use of of the pavement rating but it is our first best measure because it's comparative on the same, we put the same yardstick on every street and assigned a value. So that's how, that's how that was achieved. <coughs> Once again, I apologize. I don't want to cough it. Is there any other questions? Well, Robbie, it sounds like you want all of it, 6.8 million. So I'll be, I'll be happy to accept that tonight. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Robbie. Great job. Thank you. Now we'll move into our regular agenda. You're invited to stand for our Pledge of Allegiance or an invocation. Councilor Chambers will give an invocation. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Phil, let's bow our heads, please. Dear Father in heaven, we commit this meeting to you. Come and reveal your will in every aspect of our life. And as we discuss the affairs of this city, we ask for your will to be done. Show us your purposes, enlighten us, that we may know how you want us to accomplish our tasks. We desire your glory and blessing in all we do. Direct our thoughts, words, decisions, and actions toward the right path and help us stay on track. That your will be done as we plan to make decisions. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Councillor Striplin? Here. Councillor Jackson? Here. Councillor Chambers? Here. Councillor Starnes? Here. Councillor Gornto, yeah. Councillor Strichick, yeah. Councillor Boone. Declaring a quorum present, I call the meeting to order. The character trait of the month is respect, treating others with honor and dignity. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion for the approval of minutes for a public hearing and city council meeting held March 16, 2021. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion on these minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of adopting these minutes, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign, the minutes are adopted. 
I would like to recognize our Tauga County Board member, Jim Manderson. Thank you for coming tonight. At this time, we'll welcome any comments from persons present regarding tonight's agenda. Yes, ma'am. And please state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes to address the council. Yes, ma'am. John Lee Finnegan, 211 Deer Trace. Um, I'm just curious of where that Club 1717 is. I mean, you're, you're approving a, a license, and I don't even know where it is or what it is. Yes, ma'am. It's at the subway on 31 coming from Maxwell on your right. Now, the this is station? just the old subway. The old subway. Oh, okay. okay. And, and we're just setting it up for a public hearing. That's all. Okay. Well, I just, I didn't know which, what it was. Okay. Yeah, yes, ma'am. You. You're welcome. Does anyone else want to address the council? Mr. Mayor, do you have a report? Yes. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Robbie Anderson. Um, you know, it's good to see everyone here tonight, uh, the counselors, uh, the, and our staff, uh, the, our citizens. Uh, it's good to see that uh, some of the work that we're doing uh, uh, has some influence, inspires, and also ignites our community. But, you know, counselors, I hope everyone had a great and wonderful Easter Sunday as I was. It was uh, an inspiring, inspiring event, uh, not only in the, at the church services, but also with my family. But um, on another note, Jackson Thornton has provided us with a 2020 financial report. A copy should be in your mailbox. A uh, single audit uh, should be finalized in the very near future. We'll keep everyone up to date on that. I anticipate... Chris Neuenswander to be in attendance during our next council meeting, at which time we can further discuss the state of our city. Uh, on a, uh, another note, uh, there was a recent uh, partnership with the uh, Baptist Health, Prattville Chamber of Commerce in the city of Prattville. Uh, today started a vaccine clinic uh, and uh, it is by appointment. Uh, so please contact at uh, website baptistfirst.org for more information, these are, like I said, by appointment. So it is a very efficient and effective means of uh, administering the, uh, the vaccine. Counselors, uh, please entertain a resolution from the floor tonight. This is part of a uh, house uh, demolition project that proved to be more intense than anticipated. Uh, that's uh, uh, in District 6, and it's uh, much needed for that neighborhood. I appreciate the work session tonight and the information provided about future infrastructure needs uh, as, uh, as well. I do foresee additional work sessions, and I hope that uh, we can have uh, as many of them here tonight uh, and maybe even more. But, counselors, as a footnote, it is anticipated that the one-cent debt, uh, debt sales tax could sunset in July. Our merchants need time to reset their equipment. Time is of the essence to shape the future of Prattwell on this one. So if council is going to take action to extend the sale or create a new sales tax, replace this one, I believe that is something we need to let uh, our merchants know as well. And if not, give them time to reset their equipment. But Mr. President, that's the end of my report. Counselors, do you have any questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. At this time, we'll move into the report from council on special committees. Councilor Striplin. Yes. Councilor Jackson. Councillor Chambers. No, sir. Councillor Gorto. No, sir. Councillor Stritchett. No. Councillor Boone. Yes, sir. The fire committee met recently. All members were present. We discussed future needs of fire equipment. Thank you. And I have none. Tonight, we have the opportunity to create a consent agenda on the following items. Resolution to one, to set a public hearing to grant a restaurant retail liquor license to Cafe 1717 Incorporated, doing business as Cafe 1717. Resolution number two, to set a public hearing to grant a restaurant retail liquor license to Logan's Roadhouse 2 LLC, doing business as Logan's Roadhouse 472. Resolution number three, to reject all bids for number 21-3 for the Maples, Street Clean Drainage Rehabilitation Project. Resolution number four, to name the voting delegate for the 2021 annual business session of the Alabama League of Municipalities be held May 14, 2021 in Huntsville, Alabama. 
The chair will entertain a motion to place these items on the consent agenda. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. All those in favor of placing these resolutions on the consent agenda, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign. We now have a consent agenda before us. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion on any item on the consent agenda? Hearing none, all in favor of adopting the consent agenda, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign, the consent agenda is adopted. We will now move into our regular agenda. Resolution number one, to set a public hearing to rezone property located at the northeast corner of Old Farm Lane South in Bestaba Point Boulevard from R4 multi-family multi residential to B2 general business. Councilor Gorntow, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas the city of Prattville has submitted a request to rezone the property described in attachment A, and whereas the property to be rezoned is located inside the city limits at the northeast corner of Old Farm Lane South and Vista Point Boulevard, and whereas the petitioner wishes to rezone the property from R4 multifamily residential to B2 general business, and whereas a public hearing on the proposed rezoning was held by the Prattville Planning Commission on January 21st, 2021, and whereas the City of Prattville Planning Commission did not recommend the rezoning of said property to be amended as described in Attachment A from R4 Multifamily to B2 General Business. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that a public hearing is set for May 4th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers at City Hall. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, all in favor for this resolution, raise your right hand. All will. Oppose, please raise your right hand. And we have one opposition. Uh, the resolution is adopted. Council Gorto, will you please introduce the ordinance? Yes, sir. Pursuant to the requirements of Title 11-52-77, Code of Alabama 1975 as amended, notice is hereby given by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama, that at the regular meeting of said City Council on the 6th day of April 2021 at Prattville City Hall, uh, 101 West Main Street, Prattville, Alabama, the following proposed ordinance was introduced. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama as follows, that the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville, Alabama adopted on February 10th, 1950, subsequently amended from time to time, and the zoning map adopted on the first day of May 1987 were hereby amended to reclassify the property described in Attachment A from R4 Multifamily Residential to B2 General Business and that this pro proposed ordinance and a synopsis was advertised for two weeks in the Prattville Progress, a newspaper of general circulation within the city limits of the city of Prattville, and that the city council of the city of Prattville at its public hearing on the fourth day of May, 2021, at 6 p.m. considered said proposed ordinance, and that at such time and place, all persons who desired had an opportunity to be heard in favor of or in opposition to such ordinance. All other items and provisions of the zoning ordinance of the city of Prattville not herein specifically amended shall remain in full force and effect. The amendments herein contained were considered by the city of Prattville Planning Commission on January 21st, 2021. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and execution as provided by law. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? By the point of, we have a second. By the point of order, this item is held until May 4th, 2021 at the City Council meeting. Resolution number two, to set a public hearing to rezone property located at southeast corner of Summit Parkway and Fairview Avenue from FAR to B2 General Business. Councilor Striplin, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas Tom Allen, the owner of the property described in attachment A, and whereas the property to be rezoned is located inside the city limits 
at the southeast corner of Summit Parkway and Fairview Avenue. And whereas the petitioner wishes to rezone the property from FAR to B2. And whereas a public hearing on the proposed rezoning was held by the Prattville Planning Commission on February the 18th, 2021. And whereas the City of Prattville Planning Commission did recommend the rezoning of said property be amended as described in attachment A from FAR to B2. Now, therefore, be resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that the public hearing is set for May 4th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers at City Hall. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, all in favor for this resolution, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign. The resolution is adopted. Councilor Stritham, will you please introduce the ordinance? Yes, sir. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama as follows. That the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville, Alabama adopted on February 10th, 1950, subsequently amended from time to time and the zoning map adopted on the first day of May, 1987, are hereby amended to reclassify the property described in attachment A from FAR and recreation to B2, and that this proposed ordinance and a synopsis was advertised for two weeks in the Prattville Progress, a newspaper of general circulation within the city limits of the city of Prattville, and that the city council of the city of Prattville at its public hearing on the fourth day of May, 2021 at 6 p.m. considered said proposed ordinance and that at such time and place, all persons who desired had an opportunity to be heard in favor of or in opposition to such ordinance. All other items and provisions of the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville, not herein specifically amended, shall remain in full force and effect. The amendment contain, herein contained were considered and recommended by the City of Prattville Planning Commission on February the 18th, 2021. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and execution as provided by law. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. By point of order, this item is held until May 4th, 2021, City Council meeting. Resolution number three, to set a public hearing to rezone property located at 202 Nesbitt Court from B2 General Business to R4 Multifamily Residential. Councilor Chambers, will you introduce this resolution? Yes. Whereas Pine Creek Apartments Limited has submitted a request to rezone the property described in attachment A, and whereas the property to be rezoned is located inside the city limits at 202 Nesbitt Court, and whereas the petitioner wishes to rezone the property from B2 General Business to R4 Multifamily Residential, and whereas a public hearing on the proposed Rezoning was held by the Prattville Planning Commission on March 18, 2021, and whereas the City of Prattville Planning Commission did recommend the rezoning of said property be amended as described in Attachment A from B2 to R4. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that a public hearing is set for May 4th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the cha uh, Council Chambers at City Hall. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Perfect. We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, all in favor of this resolution, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign. The resolution is adopted. Councilor Chambers, will you please introduce the ordinance? Yes. Uh, pursuant to the requirements of Title 11-52-77, uh, Code of Alabama 1975, as amended, notice is hereby given by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama, that at the regular meeting in, in, of said City Council on the 6th day of April 2021 at Prattville City Hall, 101 West Main Street, Prattville, Alabama, the following proposed ordinance was introduced. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama, as follows, that the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville, Alabama, adopted on February 10th, 1950, subsequently amended from time to time in the zoning map adopted on the first day of May, 1987, are hereby amended to reclassify the property described in attachment A from B2 to R4, and that this proposed ordinance in, synopsis, in a synopsis was advertised for, 
two weeks in the Prattville Progress, a newspaper in general circulation within the city limits of the city of Prattville, and that the city council of the city of Prattville at its public hearing on the 4th day of May, 2021 at 6 p.m. considered said proposed ordinance and that at such time and place, all persons who desired had an opportunity to be heard in favor of or in opposition to such ordinance. All other items and provisions of the zoning ordinance of the city of Prattville not herein specifically amended shall remain in force and effect, full force and effect. Uh, the amendments herein contained were considered and recommended by the city of Prattville Planning Commission on March 18th, 2021. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and execution as provided by law. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. By point of order, this item is held until May 4th, 2021 at the City Council meeting. Resolution number four, to set a public hearing to rezone property located at 987 East Main Street from R2 single family residential to 01 office district. Councilor Stritchett, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas Juanita Jones has submitted a request to rezone the property described in attachment A, and whereas the property to rezone is located inside the city limits at 987 East Main Street, and whereas the petitioner wishes to rezone the property from R2 single family residential to 01 office district, and whereas a public hearing on the proposed zoning was held by the Planning Commission on March 18, 2021, whereas the City of Prattville Planning Commission did recommend the rezoning of said property be amended as described and attached A from R2 single family to 01 office district. Now, therefore, be resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that the public hearing is set for May 4th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers at City Hall. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, all in favor for this resolution, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign, the resolution is adopted. Councilor Stritchett, will you please introduce the ordinance? Pursuant to the requirements of Title 1152-77, Code of Alabama 1975, as amended, notice is hereby given by the City Council of the City of Proud by Alabama that a regular meeting of said council on the 6th day of April 2021 at Proudville City Hall, 101 West Main Street, Proudville, Alabama, the following proposed ordinance was introduced. Be ordained by the City Council of the City of Proudville, Alabama as follows. That is an ordinance of the City of Proudville, Alabama adopted on February 10th, 1950, subsequently amended from time to time, and the zoning map adopted on the first day of May, 1987, are hereby amended to reclassify property described at attachment A from R2 single family resident to 01 office district. And that this proposed ordinance and a synopsis was advertised for two weeks in the Prattville Progress, a newspaper of general circulation within the city limits of Prattville. And the City Council of the City of Prattville at its public hearing on, May, on the fourth day of May 2021 at 6 p.m. considered said proposed ordinance and at such time and place all persons who desire had an opportunity to be heard in favor for or in opposition to such ordinance. All other items in the provisions of the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville not here and specifically amended shall remain in full force and effect. The amendments herein contained were considered and recommended by the City Council of Planning Commission on March 18, 2021. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and execution as provided by law. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Perfect. We have a second. By point of order, this item is held until May 4th, 2021 at the City Council meeting. Resolution number five, to set a public hearing to zone property located outside the city limits of Old Ridge Road, west of Glenbrook 8 to R3 single family residential. Councilor Chambers, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Uh, whereas David L. A. Vant and Diane R. A. Vant has submitted a request to pre-zone the property described in attachment A, and whereas the property to be rezoned is located outside the city limits of Old Ridge Road West of Glenbrook 8, and whereas the petitioner wishes to pre-zone the property to R3, single family residential, and whereas a public hearing on the proposed zoning was held by the Prattville Planning Commission on March 18th, 2021, and whereas the City of Prattville Planning Commission did recommend the zoning of said property be amended as described in attachment A to R3. Now, therefore, 
be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that a public hearing is set for May 4th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers at City Hall. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. <clears throat> is there any discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, all in favor for this resolution, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign, the resolution is adopted. Councilor Chambers, will you please introduce the ordinance? Yes, sir. Uh, pursuant to the requirements of Title 11-52-77, Code of Alabama 1975 as amended, notice is hereby given, given by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama, that at the regular meeting of said City Council on the 6th day of April 2021 at Prattville City Hall, 101 West Main Street, Prattville, Alabama, the following proposed ordinance was introduced. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama as follows, that the zoning ordinance of the City of, Al of Prattville, Alabama adopted on February 10th, 1950, sub subsequently amended from time to time, and the zoning map adopted on the first day of May, 1987, are hereby amended to re reclassify the property described in attachment A from, to R3 single family residential that this proposed ordinance and a synopsis was advertised for two weeks in the Prattville progress and newspaper of general circulation within the city limits of the city of Prattville and that the city council of the city of Prattville at its public hearing on the fourth day of May 2021 at 6 p.m. considered said proposed ordinance and that at such time and place all persons who desired had an opportunity to be heard in favor of or in opposition to such ordinance. That this ordinance is adopted under the authority of 11-52-85 of the Code of Alabama 1975 as amended and is contingent on the petitioner completing the process to annex property described in attachment A and to the city of Prattville no later than 180 days following adoption of the ordinance. All other items and provisions of the zoning ordinance of the city of Prattville, not herein specifically amended shall remain in full force and effect. The amendments herein contained were considered and recommended by the City of Planning, City of Prattville Planning Commission on March 18th, 2021. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and execution as provided by law. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. We have a second. By point of order, this item is held until May 4th, 2021, City Council meeting. Resolution number six, to set a public hearing to rezone property located at the northeast corner of Old Farm Lane South and Vestev Point Boulevard from R4 Multiple Family Residential to B2 General Business. Councilor Gorto, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas BBCV High Point LLC has submitted a request to rezone the property described in attachment A, and whereas the property to be rezoned is located inside the city limits at the northeast corner of Old Farm Lane South and Vista Point Boulevard, and whereas the petitioner wishes to rezone the property from R4 Multifamily Residential to B2 General Business, and whereas a public hearing on the proposed rezoning was held by the Prattville Planning Commission on March 18th, 2021, and whereas the City of Prattville Planning Commission did recommend the rezoning of said property be amended as described in Attachment A from R4 Multifamily Residential to B2 General Business. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that a public hearing is set for May 4th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers at City Hall. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, all in favor for this resolution, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign. The resolution is adopted. Council Gorto, will you please introduce the ordinance? Yes, sir. Pursuant to the requirements of Title 11-52-77, Code of Alabama 1975 as amended, notice is hereby given by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama, that at the regular meeting of said City Council on the 6th day of April 2021 at Prattville City Hall, 101 West Main Street, Prattville, Alabama, the following or proposed ordinance was introduced. 
Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama as follows, that the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville, Alabama adopted on February 10th, 1950, subsequently amended from time to time, and the zoning map adopted on the first day of May, 1987, are hereby amended to reclassify the property described in Attachment A from R4, Multifamily Residential, to B2, General Business, and that this proposed ordinance in a synopsis was advertised for two weeks in the Prattville Progress, a newspaper of general circulation within the city limits of the City of Prattville and that the City Council of the City of Prattville at its public hearing on the fourth day of May 2021 at 6 p.m. considered said proposed ordinance and that at such time and place all persons who desired had an opportunity to be heard in favor of or in opposition to such ordinance. All other items and provisions of the zoning ordinance of the City of Prattville not herein specifically amended shall remain in full force and effect. The amendments herein contained were considered and recommended by the City of Prattville Planning Commission on March 18th, 2021. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and execution as provided by law. So moved, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. By point of order, this item is held until May 4, 2021, City Council meeting. Resolution number seven to release funds for the purchase of one 2021 or newer wheel type one custom series F Ford F-350 ambulance through the HGAC by purchasing cooperative from Southern Emergency Consultants, LLC, HGAC number FS 12-19 at a cost not to exceed $185,000. Councilor Boone, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas the City of Prattville Fire Department has identified a need for one 2021 or newer wheeled Type 1 Custom Series Ford F-350 ambulance, and whereas said vehicle is available through the HGAC by purchasing co-op from Southern Emergency Consultants LLC HGAC number FS12-19 at a cost not to exceed $185,000, and whereas there is an estimated lead time of seven months to assemble said vehicle, thus requiring approval of the purchase in fiscal year 2021 and delivery and payment of said vehicle in fiscal year 2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that funds in an amount not to exceed $185,000 for the purchase of said vehicle are hereby authorized and approved to be paid to Southern Emergency Consultants, LLC, and said funds will be approved and appropriated from fiscal year 2022 budget line item fire capital outlay. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Let me, let me get it. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Sure. We have a second. Hi, right, Daniel. Go ahead. I apologize. There's a, um, we're going to call it a Scrivener's error. Um, we've got the wrong contract number on this resolution and the next one. They just need to be swapped. So your resolution that's before you now is the we were doing ambulance and that one needs to read hdac number am 10-20 is it something we can make a strike through for andrew all right daniel say that again for this ambulance it needs to be fs 12-20 uh, let's see no sir so on line 16 um, where you see HGAC number FS 12-19. Yes, sir. Uh, can you strike through that and replace it with HGAC space number sign AM 10-20? So HGAC number AM 10-20. Yes, sir. Okay. I make a motion to make an amendment. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we're going to amend line 16 to say cooperative from Southern Emergency Consultants, LLC, HGAC number AM-10-20. So moved, Mr. President. Andrew, what do I need to do next? Okay. So just go through the, okay. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a second. Is there any discussion on this amendment? Hearing none, all in favor for this amendment, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign. 
the resolution is adopted. All right. Resolution number eight. To release funds for the purchase of one 2021 or newer E1 Class A pumper and equipment through the HGAC by Purchasing Cooperative from Sunbelt Fire HGAC number AM. No? So go back to the first one. Uh, yes, sir. If we can read the FS. Okay, one. Yes. I will say that. Thank you. All right, HGAC number FS 12 19 at a cost not to exceed $670,000. Councilor Boone, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas the City of Prattville Fire Department has identified a need for one 2021 or newer E1 Class A pumper and equipment, and whereas said truck is available through HGAC by purchasing cooperative from Sunbelt Fire HGAC number FS1219 at a cost not to exceed $670,000. And whereas there is an estimated lead time of 10 months to assemble said truck, thus requiring approval of the purchase from fiscal year 2021 and delivery and payment of said truck in fiscal year 2022. And whereas the finance director rec director recommends financing the purchase once the truck is assembled and ready for delivery. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that funds in an amount not to exceed $670,000 for the purchase of said truck are hereby authorized and approved to be paid to Sunbelt Fire, and said funds will be approved and appropriated from the fiscal year 2022 budget line item fire capital outlay. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, all in favor for this resolution, raise your right hand. Let me try that again. All in favor for this resolution, raise your right hand. All, right. all opposed, raise your right hand. Okay, we got two abstain. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number nine, to authorize the hiring of one firefighter paramedic for the fire department at a cost not to exceed $31,477.15. Councilor Boone, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas the City of Prattville Fire Department has a need to hire one firefighter paramedic, and whereas the annual cost of such employee will not exceed $31,477.15 for salary and benefits for the remainder of the fiscal year 2020 budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Prattville hereby amends the fiscal year 2020 budget as follows. Increase fire salaries and wages by $21,897.26. Increase fire FICA $1,675.14. Increase fire life insurance $9. Increase fire retirement $2,491.91. Increase fire workers' compensation $1,059.84. Increase general fund transfer to group health $4,344. And increase general fund ambulance revenue $31,477.15. Be it further resolved by the City Council of of the City of Prattville that up to $31,477.15 is hereby authorized to be expended for the purpose of hiring one firefighter paramedic, and said funds are hereby approved and appropriated from the fiscal year 2020 budget line items, fire department salaries and wages, workers' compensation, retirement, group life insurance, and FICA. Be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that Human Resources Department is authorized to implement the hiring process as budgeted. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Mr. President. Yes, sir. I make one more amendment and I apologize. Um, so we've got three line items we need to change on this one. Um, it's going to be line item number 14. Where Mr. Stand by, stand by. Okay. Okay, 14. Uh, yes, sir. It needs to read fiscal year 2021. Yeah. As opposed to 2020, same issue on line item number 18. Okay. And there's one more on number 35. Needs to read 2021, fiscal year 2021 as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, Sorry. thank you. I'd like to propose an amendment, please. Okay. 
Go. I would like to propose that we change on line 14 of our resolution, uh, the fiscal year 2020 to 2021. On line 18, we will change fiscal year 2020 to 2021. And on line 35, we will change fiscal year 2020 to 2021. So move, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, all in favor for this amendment, raise your right hand. All opposed by like sign. The amendment is adopted. It has been brought to my attention that we have a resolution from the floor. That Council is correct. Councillor Stritchett, will you introduce this resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas under the authority of Title 11, Chapter 53B of the Code of Alabama, 1975, as amended, the City of Private Building Inspector declared the structure at 1212 Josephine Court to be unsafe and a public nuisance on November 13, 2020. And whereas on November 17, 2020, the Private Police Department Code Enforcement Officer ordered the demolition of the structure at 1212 Josephine Court. Parcel 19051510001 within 45 days of said notice. And whereas the said notice was delivered by certified mail to the last known property owners and all parties have interest in interest of the property, and whereas no public hearing was requested by the property owner within 30 days of the date of notice as provided by Section 11. 53B4, Code of Alabama 1975, as amended. Whereas on January 19th, 2021, a resolution book 2021, page 017, the City Council declared that the structure located at 1212 Josephine Court continued to be unsafe and a public nuisance that must be repaired or demolished. And whereas on February the 16th, 2021, a contracting amount not to exceed $6,000 was awarded to Stoudemire Construction and removed said structure located at 1212 Josephine court and said funds were approved and appropriate from 2021 budget line item police dilapidated house demolition. Whereas unforeseen conditions in the foundation were removed and were discovered during demolition of which will require additional cost. Now therefore be resolved that the city council of the city of Prowler hereby authorize the mayor to take whatever steps are necessary to remove the unsafe structure located at 1212 Josephine Court. Being further resolved, that the additional amount not to exceed $1,700 is awarded to Stoudemire Construction to remove the said structure located at 1212 Josephine Court and said funds are hereby approved and appropriated from this budget line item, police dilapidated house demolition. The mayor shall represent the city council with a detailed list of costs and removal. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. By point of order, to have this resolution properly before uh, before the council must suspend the rules. Do we have a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. According to the council procedure, section 22, Unanimous consent must be obtained for the immediate consideration of such resolution. Such consent shall be by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, will you do a roll call vote? Councilor Striplin? Yeah. Councilor Jackson? Yeah. Councilor Chambers? Yeah. Councilor Starnes? Yeah. Councilor Gorntail? Yeah. Councilor Strichick? Yeah. Councilor Boone? This resolution is now properly before us. Is there any discussion on this resolution? All in favor of this resolution, raise your right hand. All opposed by a like sign, the resolution is adopted. This concludes our items on the agenda tonight. We'll conclude all business for the city prior to the executive session, and then after the executive session, we'll only officially adjourn from the meeting. The council welcomes any comments from persons present. Yes, ma'am. And please state your name and address. Thank you. John Lee Finnegan, 211 Deer Trace. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you don't mind and think about, is require Zoom meetings for, like, the planning committee has Zoom meetings. The... Um, uh, the 2040 uh, comprehensive plan, that was all on Zoom. So I think it'd be just really helpful for those individuals that can't get out and attend. And with the Zoom meeting, they'll be able to uh, 
you know, ask the questions, et cetera. Maybe they'll be able to speak in the beginning and speak at the end. So just consider that for the council meetings. Also, I would like uh, that the Board of Zoning and the Historic Preservation Committee meeting also be, um, their videos be posted online. The city council is and the planning, but those two are not. And so it just would help people to be able to see. Minutes are great, but as you well know, they don't cover the uh, whole conversation. And I think that'd be real important. So have the Zoom meetings for all the all those meetings and also then have the videos um, posted online. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? OK, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. You. Okay. And please state your name and address in you. Sure. Dr. Jerry Simmons, 141 North Chestnut Street. One of the things Mr. Anderson said um, caught my attention. I'm a proud uh, Tesla owner, um, and with that privilege comes the $200 electric uh, vehicle fee that I pay in addition to my registration. It's supposed to be the equivalent of the gas tax. It's kind of unfair because it doesn't matter whether I go a thousand miles or a hundred thousand miles. Um, they simply assess $200 for each electric vehicle and uh, $50, uh, $100 for each hybrid vehicle. So um, in talking with Mr. Stevens, we pulled up the, the uh, state memo, and according to the memo, which was August 7th, 2020, out of that $200 that I pay, um, $50, it says, goes to the city and the county. Unfortunately, the memo doesn't break out how much for city, how much for county. And of the hybrids, $25 goes to the city and the county. So I intend to follow up on that because we're going to see an explosion of electric vehicles in the future. To give you an example, my Ford cost 18 cents a mile. My Tesla is four cents a mile. So um, we're going to see that and we need to capture that money towards the fuel tax. Um, if we're not getting it, I, I don't know. Do you know, Mr. Oakley, if we get any? Okay. Yeah, so the probate office automatically, the minute the car has an EV, they automatically add $200 for the equivalent for the gas. So I'll follow up and get with Mr. Oakley because, you know, we, we need to capture that money. Uh, that's all I have. Yes, sir. Does anyone have any questions for him? Oh, thank you. Is there any other person that would like to speak before the council. Now we'll move into the closing comments. Mayor? Councilor Strickland? No, sir. Councilor Jackson? No, sir. Councilor Chambers? No, sir. Councilor Gorto? No, sir. Councilor Strichet? No, Councilor Boone? No, I have none. The next city council meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, April 2021 20, at 6 p.m. At this time, we'll need to discuss economic development in an executive session. The chair will entertain a motion to move into an executive session. We have a motion. Do we have a sec second? We have a second. Madam Clerk, will you take a roll call vote? Councilor Striplin? Yay. Councilor Jackson? Yay. Councilor Chambers? Yay. Councilor Starnes? Yay. Councilor Gorntail? Yay. Councilor Strichick? Yay. Councilor Booth? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. We expect to be in executive session for approximately 30 minutes to an hour. We do not plan to have any further business following the executive session. Now we'll move into an executive session at approximately 7.08 p.m. All right. Thank you.